So you've seen the title and you're probably wondering, what the hell is wrong with me? Why would I ask that question as a NASCAR fan? And I get that. But I'll ask you again, why is the Daytona 500 such a special race? Actually think about it, not just from the way that people tell you that it has to be, not because you're supposed to revere it. Think to why it is so special. What value has it given to the sport? And I think I have a perfect analogy for this. If you've watched this channel for a while or followed me on Twitter, you will know that I'm a really big Star Wars fan, especially the shows like The Clone Wars and The Mandalorian. In these respective shows, there is a weapon that's deified by the Mandalorian people. This is called the Darksaber. Now, aside from looking cool and sounding cool, this weapon is special due to the story behind it when it is passed from warrior to warrior. To me, this is the Daytona 500 as well. If a NASCAR driver is a Mandalorian, then the Daytona 500 victory is their Darksaber. So what is the story that makes this race so special? There's many significant points to it. When NASCAR started out, they raced stock cars in the sandy beaches of Daytona. But NASCAR founder Big Bill France had more grand dreams for the Florida location. He wanted a super speedway that could rival the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And he ended up getting it as well. But the best possible outcome also did happen in the inaugural Daytona 500 in 1959. The race ended with a photo finish with Lee Petty and Johnny Beauchamp crossing the line too close to call. Beauchamp was declared the winner at first, but the win was contested and there wasn't an official declaration for three days until a photo surfaced confirming that Lee Petty had in fact scored the win. The stage was set. The story had begun. Through the 1960s and the 1970s, the race became a who's who of who could win it. Drivers like Junior Johnson, Fireball Roberts, Tiny Lund, Richard Petty, Fred Lorenzen, Mario Andretti, Kale Yarbrough, AJ Foyt, and Benny Parsons all laid claim to the race. If you were going to win the Daytona 500, you had to be one of the best ever to do it. This was the case as well in 1976, with NASCAR's two best drivers, Richard Petty and David Pearson, dueling for the win. Inside easy, but he's got the lead, but there's a car ahead of him. There's a slower car ahead of him. And Richard Petty and Pearson go high. Pearson now has the lead. Petty tries to, as they come out of the fourth turn, they only have about 750 yards to go. Oh! It's an extra combination right away. They did hit. Oh! Petty smashes into the wall. Will he come across the start finish line? He's going to win the race. He's going to win it spinning as he, I believe, will take the checkered flag. No, he did not make it. He is less than 100 yards from it. Here comes Pearson. Pearson is going to try to make it across the finish line. Teddy has his car going. Pearson's going to win it. Oh, gosh, he wins the race. With this finish and the growing prestige of the 500, it led up to the takeoff point for NASCAR. In 1979, the Daytona 500 would be broadcasted live on TV, flag-to-flag -flag coverage on CBS, and it was the first time ever. The country would have to watch as well, as much of the East Coast was stuck inside their homes due to a giant snowstorm. And it was a perfect storm for NASCAR. All come down to this, out of turn two, Donnie Allison in first. Where will Kale make his move? He comes to the inside. Donnie Allison throws the block. Kale hits him. He slides. And, and there's a fight between Cale Yarborough and Donnie Allison. The tempers overflowing. They're angry. They know they have lost. And what a bitter defeat. This would give the 500 national recognition, and a race of its stature deserved that. It also was big for a reason that I don't see really many point out. This was the moment on the wide scale that the Daytona 500 became an intrinsic part of NASCAR history. While a big race beforehand, you could mostly tell NASCAR's story without having to mention the Daytona 500. Now, it's a requirement. The 80s only continued the trend of greats winning the race, as Buddy Baker, Bobby Allison, Jeff Bodine, and Bill Elliott were all added to the winner list. And the next three years, starting from 1988 through 1990, would only expand this legend and story further. The 88-500 had its first father-son-1-2 finish. 
I think anybody Davey. else can try it, but here he comes. He's going to do the it. bottom. He's down low. Bobby Allison high. Davey Allison find the inside move. Bobby Allison holds him off. They come to the stripe. And the winner of the 30th annual Great American Race, Bobby Allison. Davey Allison, his son in second. Judy Allison is static. The 17 seasons before the 1989 Daytona 500, Cup champion Darrell Waltrip had not gotten a win as well. Well, that would change. After 17 years of effort, the Daytona 500 belongs to Franklin, Tennessee's Darrell Waltrip. He's done it. He's done it. But now let's get to the ecstasy of victory. Here's Mike Joy in victory lane with Daryl Waltrip. I'm trying, I'm in the middle of this bear hug. Ken, Carl, and Rick Hendrick, driver Daryl Waltrip, wife Stevie. Oh, I won the Daytona 500. I won the Daytona 500. <laughs> Daryl, how long? Wait, wait, wait. This is the, this is the Daytona 500, isn't it? You bet it Don't is. tell me it isn't. Thank God. Season after that, Dale Earnhardt dominated the event, and it looked like the three-time champion was going to have a cakewalk to victory. Half a lap to go. Four-car shootout to decide it all. Dale Earnhardt. Here comes Duke Coat down on the inside. Dale Earnhardt has Earnhardt problem. slopping back. Something is amiss. Here comes the field driving for the finish. And on the outside, it is car number 10, Derek Cope, something amiss on the Earnhardt car. Coming to the line, it's Labonte pulling up, and an amazing finish. The Whitcomb Racing Team has won it. Three years after this race, we would have one of the most heartwarming moments in the race's history. One of the commentators for CBS's NASCAR coverage was all-time great driver Ned Jarrett. Jarrett's son Dale at the time was a driver in his own right. In the closing laps of the 93-500, he would fight another Dale, Dale Earnhardt. This would be called the Dale and Dale Show. This is the finish. Did we say five cars had a shot at it? Get ready, because it's coming to the wire. There's Jarrett in front. Jarrett pulling back in front. Bodine comes down to the inside. Jack Bodine, the 86 champion, trying to find some room. Come on, Dale. Go, baby, go. All right, come on. I know he's got it to the floorboard. He can't do any more. Come on, hang on to the inside. Don't let him get on the inside of you coming around this turn. Here he comes, Earnhardt. It's the Dale and Dale show. It's become off of turn four. You know who I'm pulling for. It's Dale Jarrett. Bring her to the inside, Dale. Don't let him get down there. He's, he's going to make it. Dale Jarrett's going to win the Daytona 500. Now, the last two Daytona 500 highlights I've shown have been heartbreaking losses for Dale Earnhardt. By 1998, he had been trying for 20 years to win this race, and for a man who's won dozens upon dozens of races at the track, it was long overdue. Three makes in the 500, Chevy, Pontiac, Ford, that's how they run. But Earnhardt has a benefit, there's a slow car up ahead. And there's he trouble coming off a of turn two, some cars get strangled, it might be this. Whoever gets back to the start-finish line, they'll get the white and the yellow together. Lake Speed and John Andretti tangle as the leaders head for turn number three. Andretti and Spencer got together. This could be the Daytona 500, Bobby Labonte goes to the outside. Labonte up high, Earnhardt uses the lap car of Rick Bass to the, as a pick. 20 years of trying, 20 years of frustration. Dale Earnhardt will come to the caution flag to win the Daytona 500. Finally, the most anticipated moment in racing. If John Elway can win the Super Bowl, Dale Earnhardt said he could win the Daytona 500. And if he comes around under caution to complete this final lap, the taste of long-awaited victory will be his. Checkered flag, Dale Earnhardt finally is a champion of the Daytona 500. Out on pit road. Every man on every crew has come out to the edge of pit lane to congratulate the man who has dominated everything there is to win in this sport, except this race, until today. The moment ranks as one of the best in NASCAR's history overall. But just as with every great story, this one has its low and sad moments as well. And three years after Earnhardt's monumental victory, he would run third on the final lap of the 2001 Daytona 500. Running behind the DEI cars that he owned, his best friend Michael Waltrip led over his son Dale Jr. Getting caught up in much of the congestion behind him, entering turn three, his car veered left 
and then back up the track, sending him into the concrete barrier, killing him on impact. Three years after this, there would be redemption for the Earnhardt family. It's all going to come down to whether Earnhardt has a bobble or a problem in his final third of the lap. Well, you can't get emotional yet because you've got to get off turn four and back to the start-finish line. And you can see it now. The legacy continues. Dale Earnhardt Jr. wins the 46th Daytona 500. Just get out and acknowledge these fans. They love you. Here he comes. Here he comes. Now, starting around 2005, the Daytona 500 began to get crazier with closer finishes and bigger wrecks, and this was shown nowhere better than the 2007 Daytona 500. Almost, he almost squeezed Harvick into the wall, and here comes Harvick, the 29, with Matt Kenseth. Oh, Mark got loose. Mark got loose. And Harvick's getting a run off turn four. It's going to be a drag race all the way back to the start-finish line. No caution. They're side by side, right to the line. Big crash. Here they come. Checkered flag. Passing the 50-year mark in 2008, the 500 continued to grow in its story. The 2010s really helped this as well. Whatever happens now happens, folks. They can all wad up down here, and somebody's going to leave out that turn. second turn. The winner, Junior, on the bottom with Boyer. Biffle ahead. Truex trying to get up there and help McMurray, but Boyer's right there behind Biffle in the 16. Look at, there goes Boyer to the outside. Look at Junior. Come on, Junior. Come on. Can they make it to the flag? Nah, no way. They'll never get through this third turn. Junior got squirreled up right there. Nah, it's just perfect. He's flying through there. Dale Earnhardt Jr. unbelievably has caught Jamie McMurray as they come to turn four. He'll have to go to the high side, though. McMurray will guard that line. Yep, Crash Gordon. at the back, never mind. Green flag still out. Checkered flag in the air. The 52nd Daytona 500 Murray. to Jimmy yes. McMurray. Yes! Edwards has room underneath. Now he pushes now Trevor Bain. It's over. Cinderella Bain is going to win the Daytona 500. It. It. Unbelievable. Happy birthday, Trevor Bain, 20 years old. Are you kidding me? Ah. <laughs> After two solid 500s to start the 2010s, it looked to be going great heading into 2012. The race, though, was rained out on Sunday, and for the first time in its 54-year history, it would be ran on a Monday night. While there were memorable moments, it's most remembered for Juan Pablo Montoya hitting a jet dryer. Four years later, though, after this, a great finish would once again define the big race. He's Still getting no a big game, push. Yeah. No he's game. getting a big he's push. He's coming. He's coming. He's it's up to second. Hamlin a second. Up high. Watch the inside. Watch the inside. Mark Truex. Truex. Jr. Three wide. Truex to the bottom. Oh, and no. No, no, no. Red. Kansas saves it. Here they come to the line. This is the finish of the Daytona 500. Come on. Side by side. Bouncing off each other. I think it was Denny Hamlin. I have it. The margin of victory was a mere one one hundredth of a second. This was the closest finish in Daytona 500 history, beating out the 2007 Daytona 500's margin of victory of two one hundredths of a second. Two years later, the finish would get even more wild. Almirola up to cover. Dylan, where will Dylan's he go? Dylan's going to get there. Oh, oh into Almirola. Around he goes. Good. 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 Hang on to it, buddy. Hang on to it. And here it comes with the number three 20 years ago. 20 years of trying for Earnhardt. He won the Daytona 500. Austin Dillon wins the 60th running. 20 years after Dale Earnhardt piloted the three car to victory lane, Austin Dillon would do the same. It's like poetry, so sort if of they rhyme. And with that, we lead to last year's race. After having tons of hype, even having the President of the United States at the race, the 500 was postponed yet again to a Monday. While an exciting event, the finish once again added to the history of the race, but not in the greatest way, at least at first. On the last lap, Ryan Newman led Ryan Blaney. Newman furiously blocked, but with a thousand feet from the finish line, his car went around, flipping violently and getting hit as well. Newman would end up being brought to a local hospital, but this is where it gets better. A few days later, he would walk out arm in arm with his daughters. 
The 500 had come full circle since 2001 in showing how far NASCAR's safety innovation had come. And thus, the story remains open-ended, awaiting the 63rd chapter to be written this February. There may not be full grandstands, but the race still remains as an American staple. The most watched race in the United States. The Great American Race. And with that, I want to pass this on to you. What's your favorite moment from the Daytona 500? There's so many to choose from, I honestly couldn't pick every single one of them to put in this video. So I might have missed your favorite moment. So let me know down in the comments below. And while you're at it, leave a like on this video, share this video, and subscribe to my channel for more great NASCAR content. And until next time, have a good one.